The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition's Hour, and also the author of the opening call. This is a Dow up 60, S&P's up actually up, hmm, that's interesting, 0.04. And now let's just look, uh, just shorter term, the E-mini made a peak D top in, at 3,000 and uh, about almost 10. Then it pulled back very sharply to the low of the 2993s. Now it's trying to have a bounce. This is options expiration Friday. I was actually thinking of putting on some positions here just for a quick trade. And now I thought, you know, all that effort for a quick trade could be right, you could be wrong. Even if your odds are 60%, it's such a whippy day that you got to. I, I didn't have time and room to articulate the thoughts of what I would do and etc. So we just left it. But yeah, you've already seen a big move. Uh, Dow was up over 100 points and it was. Um, now, it was actually up just a little bit. Now it's up 60 points. So, yeah, choppiness all, all the way around. Look at the dollar's action. It's in the trading band, and that's very good. Look at the euro, E-R-U-S-D. <clears throat> the euro is trading very ugly candle, giving back all the gains of this week, just about. Eh, just It's struggling, really it's struggling. Let's look at the British pound. British pound right here. British pound is trading. Not bad. It came off the lows of in the 1.24 ish area. Now it's at 1.253. Had a resistance right at the 12569. The black line right there. That's the 40 period exponential moving average. Trying to get off the ground. This particular candle says that if next week there is a trade in the 1265 area, 1.265, that'll be very good. For, the, for a bounce, just a bounce in the British pound. After all this time, you'd expect a bounce. But wait a minute. Um, if you're looking at the USD JPY, uh, this is the this is the yen, dollar, uh, US dollar, Japanese yen currency pair. A nice candle, but also stuck in the lower range at 107.77, up 0.47. Uh, if it goes over 108.8, 25 by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, that's going to be good for it. Then it'll say, hey, I can test the 108 uh, 80s and get into uh, maybe a leg B in the weekly chart. That'll be very nice. So let's get back to uh, what I was showing you before. In the gold, this is a very important, <coughs> excuse me, turnaround. Did I uh, update my 120 minute chart? Give me a second here. So today's technical Friday. So today's the day that we like to do uh, an analysis that says, uh, this is where we are, this is what we're looking at, and if other things happen, uh, it could change the trend, but the trend right now is what we have to look at um, quite seriously. So gold is pulled back in the 120-minute chart. Technically, it looks like a D. It's acting like a D, but it's actually a C, but that'll be a failure if it goes under one. If it goes under 14.19 by the end of the day or Sunday night, that'll be a bit of a failure. And it'll say, hey, you know what? Fabulous move. Just time for a little bit of breather. Silver is, oh, look at this turn down in silver. A leg D. Now, why do I say, oh, a leg D? Because in the Champ Wave methodology, let me show you this right now. Get it out the way. We try to identify the lowest low bar, merely count each success. That's how easy it is. Just count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, all the way to a G. But the fourth highest peak, peak A is one. Peak B is two. One penny above peak B starts leg C. Leg C becomes a peak C when there's a turn down. And then one penny above peak C says start a leg D. One one penny below uh, to make a, a um, kind of a triangle top says you're now making a peak D. So three patterns that we look for. D is where we look at the Chapman Wave methodology saying this is where other things can happen. You can have a sharp slide. You can go sideways. You can break to a whole new buy mode, but a buy signal to a buy mode means you should go to at least four peaks. That's why this leg C in the monthly chart of the Dow is so important because it says regardless, we should go to a leg D sometime this summer or early fall. Okay, so straight line move up or down, that's one. Arch formation, two. 
up formation three, but there you can get the package, and that's straight line down, arch formation, test the left side low, break it, that's why it's red, going up, you've got a green, green uh, line, straight line, then you get your cup formation, take out the left side high, if the tech mills deteriorate, that means a double top, if they are continuing to expand, that's a very bullish sign. So, three patterns, straight up, straight down, arch, cup, or the mixture. So here we go. We're looking at a V-shaped pattern in silver. Not only did it make a V-shaped pattern, but it, it made a Chapman Wave cup and ladle breakout. I should just recognize this immediately and said, hey, we're climbing on the SLV bandwagon because we've just had a cup, Chapman Wave cup and ladle a breakout pattern before going to a leg D, number one. It's only a leg D slash B if this continues to rally. And uh, that says this is very positive, having been pretty much sideways for ages. Breaks out, look at the MACD, look how strong that is. Stochastic said 87%. Should be a little higher, but 87 is pretty darn good. 80 is such a good. 90 is such a really good. 97, 96 is absolutely fabulous. So we're looking at the stochastic in the Mac and MACD in the weekly chart. MACD is good, not as good as it was when it made the previous peak D um, at 16.457. I'm going to forget this. I'm going to do this right now. Excuse me. As usual, I'm going to just break away for a second. Shop. This is Shopify. Had a round number, 339, all-time high um, today, and it's pulling back a little bit. It's still up four at 3.35. We're going to watch this closely. The last one was a peak E at 338.94, and it plummeted down to the 280 level. I say plummeted because that was the deepest correction it had in a while. And look at this fabulous move to the upside. And um, the MACD is just cross positive, not nearly as good as it was back when it made that uh, June 20th high of 338. Um, and the stochastic is good, not nearly as good as it was uh, there either. So this is a very important moment. The reason why I did it, because I said I'm going to forget it. I needed a trigger to remind me that that reminded me. Let's go back to silver. Silver is trading at 16.16, uh, .16, down 0.03 after a fabulous pop to the upside, going to $16.625. $16 and that's really important because we're now trading at 16.16, .16, and the 120-minute chart, oh, I thought I'd done this. Let's do this live because this is um, eh, Tiger Technician's Hour. Let's, yeah, let me just do that. So the lowest low bar, let me just pick this one here because it's the most obvious low bar. Nearly count each successively higher peak. See where we go. We're going peak A. There's a 120-minute chart. B, C, D, E. F, and I'm calling this a G because the MACD deflected high without crossing negative, and then it should be a sharp pullback and start a brand new move. That's exactly what it did. So that G gets a down arrow. That G looks like a C, huh? Did I hit the wrong key? Yeah, that is a C. That shouldn't be a C. That should be a G. All right. G is the highest you can go, otherwise you recycle. Now you start a brand new move, goes to peak A, peak B. MACD is good, C, D, and now we're looking at right there, and it goes all the way to an E, and lo and behold, F. When you get an F with a very sharp decline, straight afterwards, that's very negative. Short term, it's a 120-minute chart. The week the daily still looks good. We do look great. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 76. S&P's only up 2.40. I said there'll be a divergence today. Let's see what happens. I'll be back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. Now, also, before I forget, since it's Technical Friday, yesterday I had a call just, uh, I, I never got to it. I just, I didn't see, I was looking, I was looking, and then when I finally saw uh, that uh, Rich in Oregon had called wanting to know about FITH. It wasn't FITH, I'm assuming it was FITB, which is fifth third. I quickly grabbed it, but unfortunately he couldn't wait online. Hope you're listening and I'm going to cover it because what I'd say to you yesterday is that just looking at it now, I need more work, but I think it looks kind of good for a trading range. And if you were to nibble on it right there at 27, <clears throat> I think it was 2765, 2770. <clears throat> You could do that, have a, a, a just a, for the day, I see to have a wide-ish 80 cents, maybe one point stop, just to get going. Today, it's up 17 cents at 27.98. And this is what I'm really looking at. Within the context of patterns, let me just do this here, because I want to finish that up. From the low that was made round about 24, um, that was in March, it goes peak, look at this, peak A, peak B, Peak C, peak D. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E. Wow, that's just the quickest series of, of, of um, alphabetizing that you can get. Wow, look at that. A, rest, B, rest, C, rest, D, rest, E. I, I must make that, uh, I must take that as a kind of a template of the quickest you can get to a, to a top. And uh, especially going from an A to an E. Look at that, every other bar had a peak. That's incredible. All right, then it makes this big cup formation. And now you can call it, it just a, for ease of the eye, you can call it a kind of a cup and handle. But really, you have to go to the to the high that was made back at uh, just about 29. Uh, that was uh, the beginning of, of end of April, beginning of May. So what we have now is we have a trend line that's declining. I, I believe this is a regional, so not one of the big ones. It's a regional. And I remember when they came out, and I remember, we, or at least when it was a noticeable a company, or many people used to say Fifth Third Bank. I mean, it doesn't even roll off the tongue easily. Fifth Third. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's a, that's that's a different issue altogether. It's walking the 200 period moving average. Look, it just keeps on holding. That's like a magnet almost. And now it's above it, and it's really holding nicely above the nine and the 14 period moving averages. The MACD is okay and the daily, the, the stochastics turned down. I think it's in a trading band, but you could get a shorter term 
you can get a, I think you can get at least three quarters of a point to a point before you have to make any other uh, decision. So above 28.40 in the next week and a half will be very good action. Weekly chart holding good. It's a pity that it's a little reddish the candle. If it was up at the other, uh, the higher end, if today can close at 28.13 or higher, that'll be really good. But overall, on a monthly basis, it's really just a sideways trading band. And therefore, I would say that there are better places to put your money. But if you're interested, if you can see some fundamentals, and I was talking to my friend who has the, um, the, the semiconductor, sold his semiconductor company, still very much involved in the, in the in industry. And he said, without giving you anything that isn't public information, I said, I know you're going to tell me that the uh, billing is still terrible because that's what I've read and everything that I'm looking at. And yet it's almost at all-time highs in the 116s, the SMHs. 120 was the high. He said, I, I don't know, all I can remember from you, he said to me, is a long time ago you said to me, fundamentals, shmundamentals. That's exactly where we are because the billings aren't there. Applied materials and others are like 30% lower than they should be. He said, I don't know what's going on, but the price is the price, and that's what it is. So um, this is the same thing here. We, I don't know about the fundamentals of this, but what it is saying is it's, it's in a very stable area. Look, it's been, it's been. Uh, if I put a trend line right here, and I'll just do this. If I if I put a horizontal line where we are today, uh, let me put it down at 2760. Uh, that's just 2760 is 30 cents lower. We've been here ever since January, the week of the 25th, and then there was a very sharp decline. But we were back there in October, November. So it. it it's really more a sideways trading band, and my suspicion is that if we can just garner a little bit of strength, like 40 to 50 cents over the next few days, I think it's going to go for the trend line of 28.40. So I hope that helps you. Um, the support has to hold between 27.50 and 27.20. If it actually closes below 27.20, it's just back into this arch sine wave formation that just keeps going arch cup, arch cup. But I think this time it has just a chance of, of, of moving towards the higher end. Hope that helps you. Okay, next thing I had a question here is uh, wheat. Yes, does wheat very strong move today? It's up um, 16 and a half at 510. But this is coming from the low that was made this morning at 492. So yes, we're still thinking that this, um, the, um, Agricultural fund is doing very nicely. We still own that. It's down from the highs, but it's still very nicely up in our uh, portfolio. So that's good. Look at core uh, soybeans. Soybeans, very strong move today. 23 and a half points up, up 2.61 percent at 9.22 and a half. This is in the upper range of its of its thing. 9.33 is a 200 period moving average. And if you look at corn, as we say here in the Boston area, Boston area. Khan is trading at 432 and a quarter, up seven and three quarters. That's okay. It's been one of the laggards. It, it, it had a spectacular move going from the 351 area all the way to the 467s. I mean, that's a whopper of a move, right? Hundreds, like a, up 33% up or more. Um, taking a bit of a breather. So that's that. The next question I had was, could I look at, where was this? Could I look at, our, our, was that me? Let me just double check. I don't want to skip a turn here. Yeah, could I look at Oracle O R C L Oracle? Oh, I typed it in the den. You're not going to get that information from me if I put it in the den. I'm putting it on my computer. Trade station pops up, and Oracle has made a PE uh, in the weekly chart, pulling back quite sharply. Um, a G slash B. Actually, this is a. I have to put a B. I, something will have to happen for me to completely change my mind. This is a monster move up in the monthly charts. I have to tell you, these monthly charts have broken out in most of the key indexes and most of the key stocks. I'm really impressed with what I see. Peak C, peak C, peak D, peak E. Made a peak E. See, this is the reason why I think that we're in for a choppy sideways to down phase going into the Fed speak of October the 31st, October of July the 31st. And look at this. There's Oracle. Let me just do this one at a time. Remember when we look at the Chapman wave, we look for the technicals to be te deteriorating or confirming a pullback from a high. Yep, let me just look at GBTC, get that out the way. GBTC having a little bit of a bounce. 
rectangle formation, 17.40 for the Bitcoin uh, trust up in, in June, uh, 17.40, drops down to 12, bounces up to just over 17, comes down to 12 and a little bit, and now it's trading at 13. Stuck in a range, just think range bound for a little while longer. Uh, now, let's get back to uh, what we were looking at. And I was, oh, here we go. So here we go, the Dow, big D, um, not a big move down. It's just like it's, it's, this is a process. And one of the reasons why I, I will give you a little lesson here in the way I look at markets. So let's just see if this is the one. Is that the one? Yeah. Look, there's the, here's the Dow. There are these two moving averages. Look at the distance. Look what you have to do to break down. Look what happened in April to May. It took days. It took a week and a half before you actually broke and closed negative with the MACD, with the uh, two moving averages, the faster closing over the slower. And look what's happened here. We haven't even begun. We haven't even closed below the nine period moving average yet. Dow's up 73 hours. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, so we're looking at the Dow. This is just with two moving averages, and you can move any. It doesn't really matter what moving averages you use. I just happen to find that these fit my parameters that I'm always looking for so much easier. And look at this. This Chapman Wave automated resistance levels really repelling the price, just struggling, and yet it hasn't. Only once has it nicked in, in all this time since it broke above. We went long uh, June the third at the open, which was at twenty four thousand eight thirty, and uh, actually for those some people got in a, a tad earlier than that because it was pre market, but that was about the level. And since it broke above, 
the uh, this 14 period moving average, look what happened. You haven't been down since it, actually, I should say, since it closed above the 14 period moving average of the 5th of June, it has not closed below the nine period, the green one, ever. Since then, ever, meaning since then. Uh, it has nicked it twice, touched it a couple of times, but that's it. So you'd have to see the Dow under 27,130 to actually say, oh, now we're, now we're going down. Oh, wait a minute, you've still got the 14 period, which has not been touched at all. So there's a lot of support. It's a process. And the same way as you took a process over here to break down, I think we're looking at a process. Now, I don't know if it has to be a steeper decline as it was because there's been a rotation, rotational correction going on. So, But I do think that choppy to down is kind of the operative word. Now, look at the S&P. SPX.X, that's the way I get it, from Trade Station. Um, also above, but it did touch, almost touch the 14 period moving average after closing decisively below uh, three days ago. And having done that once or twice, it's a little weaker than the Dow. It's up three right now, 29.98. Ha ha, but wait a minute. We haven't even got a turn down to cross negative. You probably would have to see the S&P below 29.68. Look at the QQQ, one, two, three. QQQ bounces up, uses that as a, as a, as a kind of a springboard. Boom bounces up you until it closes under 190 and it's trading at 192.76 right now 34 cents the queues are not going to turn that the trend and you remember i had my my webinar you could if you want to become a subscriber just you can sign up and then you get my webinars and each one i'm real proud of my webinars the last one was called the tide and i was discussing techniques that you can use to identify the tide the reason why we went short back in april because i was about to get a change in try i anticipated a little bit using chapman wave the methodology and expecting a G slash C to become a D, and then we finally got that D, but then the tide was down, and then the tide was up from the June 3rd low. What are we looking at now? We don't have a, a signal, so you have to use other techniques to get that signal. And you can see this residual strength. Look at Boeing all of a sudden. Boeing today is up 15. It was up 7 overnight. Boeing is up 15. Everyone thinks hunky-dory and they're just going to pay off everyone. This is going to haunt Boeing for a little while longer. So I would be careful with Boeing. Um, there still has to be just a, a sudden spike. In other words, I like to look at an internal low. We kind of be, Maybe we made the internal low back in June at the 330 area. But I think we have to have a residual low, and that'll be with just lawsuits and a whole bunch of things come out, and it just looks really bad for Boeing. And if it can hold above that internal low and make a, a, an emotional, what I call it, a residual emotion, emotional low, then maybe Boeing could really start a big move to the upside. They're still the king of the, of the whole area, um, but they really, uh, there's alchemy in that, that, that golden crown. Um, they, they, it's a real problem and should never have happened and uh, we won't see anybody in jail but boy this is jail worthy okay enough of that so that was Boeing and I just wanted to show you how in the rotational a aspect if Boeing wasn't up there we would not be uh, up 80 in the Dow but the S&P is only up 3 in the Dow is usually a tad weaker so we would be only up 25 points 28 points so it's helping and, and doesn't matter the longer you can get this residual series of one or two or three day wonders to help a particular index move up the longer you've taken away from usurping that downside energy. You're just using up time. Oh, enough for that. Uh, IYT. Question about IYT. IYT is up very nicely today. Up $1.75 at $191.32, but really just stuck in the range. Made a peak F top in the Chapman Wave at a 195 point, uh, 65 on the 16th. Here we go. 195.65 on 7.16. And it's in the process of just chopping sideways. You can see the weekly chart, sideways action, monthly chart, sideways, making the. Uh, I don't like drawing these things in because they always look useless after a while. But there's a, there's a kind of a triangle formation coming into a, an apex. Uh, we'll see. It's a little short, but we'll see see what happens. It's good. So the XAL, which is the airline ARCA index, is trading up, trading down now. Down 17 cents at 106.67. Hasn't got to the peaks at D. It should try to get to a D. Peak C in the daily, leg C in the weekly, 
and leg B in the monthly, but trading in a range, it's really struggled. And yet you've got a crude oil, come on, give me a break. Crude oil is up 16 cents after hitting 60.94. Oh, no, no, no. You did not update that. 61.08. I thought that was wrong. 61.08, around about the 14th or so of. Yeah, and now it's down. Not a big deal, but it's down to 55. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's almost 10%. I'd say it's a big deal. And it's stuck in the range. Look, you've got your H pattern, lowercase h. What's a lowercase h? Right here, yeah, there's your lowercase h in the weekly chart. Remember, you just see these patterns over and over and over. So this is an arch formation making a little inverted cup. Watch it closely. If crude oil actually takes out, I'd say, the 54... What did I say? I think I said 54.70, so it's a little lower than that now at 55. Oh, 55, 55, yeah. I said 54.70 was about the level that I think you should see support. If it goes lower than that, that means something else. And the upside was uh, 59.80 to 60.10, somewhere around there is very strong resistance. All right, let's get out of this. And we want to go to um, uh, Microsoft. So this is going to be very interesting. Microsoft, I spoke about this, was it yesterday? I said, look at Microsoft. Go, go all the way back and you see how it broke in, the, in a bowl formation from the high of 2000, and then it breaks out to the upside and just continues going. And these old-fashioned, these old-time stocks that are re, just reinvented themselves, what brilliance is that from the CEO? Um, and go to all-time highs, I'm impressed. I think that's fantastic. Now it could have a bit of a digestive phase. It was up earlier. It hit 140.67. I was looking for a round number. There wasn't. It's 140.67. Trading at 138.51. We'll see what happens. Was the round number open? No. 138.04 is the low so far. No. Okay. So watching this closely, a fabulous move. Just needs to digest gains. So Fang, Facebook. Here we go. Facebook trading at... Um, 201.40, it's used up time from its most recent high in the 205 area, peak E, leg E in the weekly chart. Is that a peak E or a leg E? One, a 205.30, 205.47. It just squeaked this week to a new leg E extension. Leg B in the monthly chart, yeah, it looks very good. Could have a high level consolidation between uh, at one, 201 right now, between 183 and maybe even 2 210 towards the old high. That could be a range for the next uh, week or two. Amazon, let's look at Amazon after that prime two days. And since then, it's pulled back. Made a peak D in the Chapman wave, and now it's pulled back. It's really consolidating. It's under the rectangle. Weekly chart is E slash B. Yeah, it's made, uh, this hasn't made an all time high yet. It will at some point soon. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let's just finish this up. A a a Amazon right now is trading, uh, let's see, it's up 7 at 1985. So it's got the most recent high of a peak. D has just used time so far, but the MACD did turn down. Stochastic's way down from the 80% level. It was actually up in the 96, 97%. Now it's at 72, but the price is holding, but it is making lower lows and lower highs. So I think a little digestive phase right here. Uh, 2035.80 was the high. 2050.50 was the um, September high, all-time high. Plummets down to round number. I forgot to put it in here, but I've got it there. So 13.07 was the low number, round number low in December. Hey, this is quite a move. 13.07 to 1986. Hmm, not bad. Six five, five, wow. That is, that's 500 points. That's a very good move. So, yeah. So I think that they're all going towards the highs. They've taken nine months, some of them 10 months or more, to, to uh, have this full digestive phase. I think there's a new buy mode that's in place. Apple, Apple is a mature company, but look at this. It's very nice. It's a slow grind to the downside, sorry, a slow grind to the upside, struggling to make slightly higher highs. If it can get into the 207.50, 2830 area next week, that'll be a breakout. But if it starts to pull back, it's 205.06. If it closes under 202 in the next week, that's going to say a little time out, and that just extends this move to the right uh, in the weekly chart. Look, here's the weekly chart. You, we should get a leg D at some point uh, by uh, September, August, September. And the other thing that I'm looking at here is Netflix made it. Look at this, fabulous. I actually thought I was doing it on the show the other day. I can't remember if I did it, but I know that it went to a peak E with a double top, and, and that was at... 384.76, 423.21 was the June 2018 high. Plummets down to 231. Has a spectacular move up to 384. I mean, 150 points. That's, you know. So, and then it gaps down. And now it's a gap down. I have a rule of gaps. If you have a huge gap down, you have three days in which to close above the gap down high. In this case, it would be 329.85, the gap from the day before going after the earnings report on the 17th, plunges down, and uh, that was the high, 320.30 was the low. Today, it's an inside bar, but it's a red bar. You have three days to close above, to, to spike above, but actually, I like to say close above 329.45, whatever that was, and then what you want to see is if any pullback holds the close of that day, which was 325.21, and... Uh, how can that be? 325. Oh, 320.30 was the low. Right. So um, today's low so far is 320.50, just a fraction above. Inside bar, 
you've got another two days in which to close above that high. If you close, if not you, but if uh, Netflix closes below 320.30 um, in the next day or two, uh, then you can expect that the, the close of the 18th at 325 is going to be tough because it has to break out above that. Then it has to close above the gap down low. That, that'll just give more pressure for selling. So, And I think the surprise was, it was a surprise to the downside, that kind of selling. All right, next thing is a Goog uh, Alphabet just made a peak F top at 11.58. 1158.58, let me just type that in because it might be here for a while, 1158.58. Um, and that is the high to break above. Yeah, you can go to a G with a rogue wave above it. That might happen. That's the way we're looking at this particular uh, consolidation unfolding right now. It's giving room for just a sudden flurry of news and a turn down the same day, gap, a gap up and then a reversal with a red candle close. That'll say, uh-oh, now we've made a top of consequence uh, short term, not longer term, because that often uses usurps energy. Uh, so that's what we were watching for. So Google is uh, just in a trading range. It's, you know, I think it's going to struggle to get to the all-time high uh, near so uh, 12.98. I think it was in 12.89. 12.89.27 was the all-time high. Okay, enough with that. I wanted to talk about the SMHs. Look, the SMHs. Remember what I just said, fundamentals, fundamentals. Here we are at 117.50. Oh, I can't believe how nice it would have been if I, I had the technicals to say do it. I just, my mind was saying, billings are not there. Everything is, I, I used some fundamentals, which I shouldn't have done. The technicals did give a turnaround. Look at this. The MACD crossed beautifully positive. Uh, the stochastic ran up. is even a little bit of a Chapman wave squash here. Goes to peak A, B. Oh, I know what it was. This decline from peak C under the 200 period moving average kind of confused things for me. And then it goes to a D, just normally high, and then pulls back. And then the left side, right side price time match, it goes there, and then it spikes up. So it was always a little late. I should have just been in and said, don't worry, we're in. Don't worry about chops and changes. Just raise the stop, and that would have been it. Didn't do it. Bad timing. Um, the, the technicals are there. It was my interpretation. Look, if you just followed the faster moving average, you'd still be in SMHs from the breakout right there. The day of, the 6th of, let's go to the high, 103.11, it's trading 14 points higher. And it's still, look, look at this good candle. I, I actually have, a, a, over the weekend, for my subscribers to my opening call, I always show the SMHs as well as all the many other charts. I'm going to discuss it a little bit more because I think something's happening here for the next half of the next, hmm, how can I put it, for the fall. And I'm not sure the fall will be a fall. It could be a rally if we can have a decent pullback before that. Uh, let's see. Uh, EEM, I was asked about. The EEM is the Emerging Markets Index. Stuck in a range, nothing yet. I think that the American markets, uh, that's the place to be. That's where the Fed's doing its business. E, uh, um, now, I had a question about where did it go? Uh, there it is. Um, so the uh, it says, it says both of these uh, Facebook and Amazon are flashing sell signals on the MACD. Let me go there. Uh, it must be in the day. Yes, they turned down, but okay. It's technical Friday. Let's do a little technical analysis. So, Paul, you're correct. I, I'm not arguing with you that there is a crossover and the stochastics now at 80%, just about to go to uh, the 70% area. So that's a negative. But you remember the price is the arbiter of the trend. I, I couldn't even tell you. I should have made a note. I've got so many examples of the technicals just failing miserably, and yet the price holds. When the price holds with the technicals failing, it doesn't mean that when the technicals come back, there used to be a skyrocket. No, what happens is the technicals kind of come back anticipating that the price will move higher, but the price, price doesn't move higher sometimes. That's when you get a fantastic short signal. So I, I'm agreeing with you. I've actually got these on my, my radar for the exact reason that you've just outlined. But I, we aren't there yet. Look, Amazon. Amazon, yes, just today, crossed negative in the MACD. Price did drop yesterday. Now it bounces up nine points. So this is a process. And let me, let me just try to do this again. 
Yeah, let me show you. A little free lesson. Should have had this as one of my, my Master Trader series um, sessions. Let me just quickly show you. Amazon is just starting a little bit to weaken between these two moving averages. And until they cross over, now it's going to take time. So it's a very, very lagging indicator. But if they do, then you're going to get a much deeper decline. So that's really what I'm watching. And even Facebook, even Facebook, Facebook is still trading above the 9 EMA. So be careful. You can be a little early. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. It's trading at uh, down 26. It's stuck in a range, and that's what I've been discussing. When I had an email yesterday about it, and I said, no, just think of it as range bound for now. We are going to get a trend, but right now it looks to me like yields want to climb a little bit, and then we'll see what happens at the end of the month. That could be the surprise that uh, uh, Fidelity just sent out. Trouble sign for the stocks, Dow Theory. You know, I don't, as, I mean, decades I've been watching this Dow Theory. So the Dow is at all time, just about all time highs a few days ago. The IYT is way lower, having a nice rally. I, I don't subscribe to Dow Theory uh, the way it was. I do subscribe to the fact that I like to see the transportation index moving together on the same di in the same direction as the Dow. That, to me, is a confirming trend, but not, e not even that. I like to see all three sectors, the airlines, the, the rails, and the truckers to move in the same direction. Now we're being getting some kind of a divergence. That says to me, be a little, be a little careful. So, um, and now we're at one o'clock, and I said if the uh, S&P was down four, 
um, we could expect a mixed market and say we've got a mixed market with being up for it one o'clock and the s p is up uh, the dow is up 98. Um, this is all a, all a process with a tremendous resistance levels you remember i spoke about this the other day if i go to the uh, just real quickly as we're about to sign off don't forget my my opening call is the uh oh ctas is syntax look at that all-time highs today are uh, getting close to resistance that's a really good sign but if you look at the dow look at all the resistance levels of the automated chapman wave in the different time frames little one here is the 10 minute but the daily look at the daily how much resistance there is in the 27,200 to 27,330 area uh, same thing here in the uh, 120 minute chart look at the s p look how many resistance levels just above look at this here it comes look all that whole cluster in the 30 20 area to 30 27 so you can go through this there's a lot of resistance levels and just treat it as if there's a little, we kind of we've had a fabulous move this is a time to, to generate some kind of energy. That's really important. For my subscribers, I will be sending out a lot of charts this weekend. We're going to try to look at the bigger picture as it stands right now. That's what we've tried to do for the last couple of months. So we have positions that are nice today. We've got one that's up 2.7%, one that's up 70.70%, 70 another one that's up 60%, another one that's up 1.10%. Uh, hey, nice day today. I'll be back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom.